Welcome everybody and today we're going to be working on some friendship balloons for friendship day down in Mexico and I have uh, tried to adapt them by putting in English because usually they have it all in Spanish when I'm down there and uh, we're going to make this into various colors of red and pink and our Tweety Bird's going to be yellow. Not sure if we're going to do a background at this point but we're going to try and use all the different uh, bits and bobs that we started to learn in terms of graded washes and some glazing and things like that. The first thing I'm going to use today is my permanent rose. Here's my permanent rose because we have a few hearts that need to be applied and we don't want it to be too dark and too light but we want them on the pink sign. So I'm going to start uh, with this set of parts here individually using my brush that has uh, a dagger because it's great it's got a tip but it has a, a, a kind of a edge on the side and I'm just going to apply the pink I'm not going to go back into the paint I'm just going to see if I can get various shades here um, and see how long I can actually go without having to come back into the paint. Let's see how that goes. Now I could even pick it up a little bit from here. Bring it back over here. Okay, now I'm I'm getting to the point where even though I'm dry brushing or you know putting wet on dry, I think I need a little bit more paint. So I'm going to now put my brush back into my paint. And I'm going to darken that color here. Lovely. Oh, it's going to creep. Look at that. So we've got to now add that up here. And I wonder if it'll creep into the other one. Got to remember that part that we can get some interesting blooms and things if we have something wet around the image. All right, let's put the heart here. Paint it. Paint that one. I'm just trying to get a little lighter down on the other one here. Just have to be careful because now the one above it is wet, but my brush doesn't have as much moisture on it, so it's not gonna shouldn't trigger it too much. It has more moisture in the actual area. So just going back in and checking that I've got all my little edges done. I notice here I don't, so let's see if I can just add a bit. Ooh, that's going to change it. Give it a bit of a tone. These are okay. Excellent, except we have to do Tweety Bird around him. There's another heart there. So that means we can't paint Tweety Bird right away because he's going to be yellow and this is pink and we'll end up getting orange, which would be fine for the beak. And as a matter of fact, I, we can do that because now I've got light enough color that I could just go over the beak. Here we go. Just like that. And I'm going to go over his feet too. Or her feet. I'm not sure if Tweety Bird is a he or her. It's just Tweety Bird. Maybe he's a they. There you go. Okay. Oh, I just see a little part there. Oh, and did you see? It crept, crept into here, but it makes it interesting. And I, I didn't stay in the lines over here. By the way, I am uh, used a felt pen again, just so you can see more easily the image. Otherwise, I would have just done it in pencil, but it was easier to, to uh, make the outline. And I just noticed now with the light that I haven't quite got off all the pencil that I had taken with my needed eraser to erase off so there's my needed eraser again and you can see that I'm just going around and rubbing it on and I can then stretch that out like this and get it back really nicely okay let's add some more color uh, we're going to go into here now and this time we're going to do a full pink wash so we're going to take some of our paint and we're going to just add some water to it and we're going to do a wet on dry 
So we're going to do a flat wash. And that was one of the first things we learned in our beginners class. So we're just going in and I'm trying to just make sure I cover that edge and going one way across pushing the paint paint around making sure that if there's any left I can just grab it if not I need to go back into my tray and add some more here there we go bring it down here now we had that idea that we could you know go different ways and use our different brush strokes now I don't have enough paint on here so I need to get some more paint and I'm going to try and use my brush stroke to properly fill in that area. So that was in our second class. We were talking about brush strokes and how using the tip or using the middle of the brush can affect how we're painting. And now we have to wait for that to dry so we can do some more glazing on that. Okay, so if that's the case, let's do something else. Um, we're going to do this one in a really light pink, and then we'll make some fun colors afterwards on top. Uh, for the, So I have to add some more water to my mix so I can get a really light wash. There we go. Now I could add even more water right to the mix here to lighten it up again. And if I'm still not happy with that mix, I can take a tissue and I can dab it out of it. Okay, and then I could even take my brush and dry it, and I could even push it around a bit if I wasn't too happy with how pink it got. That's looking pretty good now. Oh, we need to do just the base here. Excellent. Okay, so the Tweety is doing really well right now. But we are going to do a little bit of uh, different coloring here. We're going to do almost like a mauve around here. And then we're going to do a, ooh, we've got one ring here, one ring there, and that's it. We don't have to do any more. So let's see here. I've got to make it the right color then. So this is going to be mauve. This is going to be mauve. This is going to be really kind of shiny, purpley, magenta. And then we'll make this magenta. We'll leave the um, words uncolored. That, that'll be the easiest. Now, I'm telling you that also I forgot to mention, you do not have to put all these images in your balloons if you make it want to make it just easy. Okay? You can even change the images up. I just chose the images that I had on the picture that I sent you. So that's all you need to worry about. So let's go. Here we go. We're going to go first into the mauve. And how we get the mauve is we take some of that nice pink that we have there. And then we take some of the phthalo blue. Oh, there it is. Almost all ready for us. And we mix it in together. Let me add a little bit more pink. And there we got really nice purple there. So I'm going to put that on my one part of the balloon here and try and use the tip and then use the flat of the brush in the center. And now on the other side, now I've got to be a little more detailed because I've got to watch that heart there. And then it's actually going to go around on this side too. So you might want to use a smaller brush if you think that it's going to be too difficult and then if you want to, you can use a bigger brush for some of the larger washes as well, just to test it out. Um, I, You know what? I could have used a flat brush too. I hadn't thought of that. So this is a great opportunity to try a couple different of your brushes, especially if you're using a different color. And that way you don't contaminate your brushes and you keep the color this really simple. All right, so we've got that. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to make a little bit more purple in the center here, uh, like another bullseye. So I just have to watch painting around the my lettering. That way it's not quite so bright. that in the O2. 
Okay, I think that's a pretty good circle there. Just make sure I've got enough paint. It's looking good. Okay. Now we may change it because you never know, you may want to have a little bit more color around the white lettering, but we'll see how that other coloring turns out. All right, so now I have this fabulous pearline red, uh, pearline red here, and I'm going to use that on my big umbrella, uh, big, uh, big umbrella, big balloon here, because this is dry, and I'm going to go around now, and I'm going to paint around the hearts. So this is going to, I see all that nice juicy color that's there with the water. So I want to keep that just kind of flowing so that I can keep pushing the paint around and do my glaze. And I want it to have enough paint so that I can keep going around and not have any lines or anything. So I just went back and dipped my brush in there. So just keep going around here. Now there are a couple areas where you see these little lines where the balloon was actually really tight and was making these little indentations. So you could try and put a little extra paint around there. Um, but right now I've got to dip my brush back in because I'm missing. I need some more paint. Here we go. Oh, and i got to get over here to this side too. There, I can leave it there because it's a very small amount there. If it, if it starts to dry, I shouldn't have any problem catching up with that. Shouldn't make too much of a line. Oh, went over a little bit. Working too fast. A little bit more paint. Here we go. I've got to remember that that other heart is there. Oh, let's make that one. Since I had a happy accident, let's make that one a red, and we'll make it a darker red. How about that? Maybe even a kind of a pur Why don't we do that purple afterwards? But we have to let it dry. Okay. Oh, and I just noticed that I didn't do a very good job around the edge here, so I'm going to take very carefully with my point of my brush and just push it around a bit. Same here. And here. Okay, and how about here? All right, we'll come back and do some fun additions here. Now this is wet and wet. If I was to put a little bit more paint in there right now, Just going to drop in a bit more so you can see how wet on wet just it just keeps moving around and spreading around since some parts are wetter than others okay now um, let us try Tweety Bird Tweety Bird is all red around but the red is a little bit more cool so how we do that is we take some of the permanent rose and the perline red and we put it together there's the permanent rose let me just pop in some more permanent rose and a little bit my pyrene red and you can use any red you like now see that's quite so quite um, cherry red. Now it's getting a little bit more on the coolish red. And we can add just a hint of blue. So I'm just going to pick up that blue and I'll bring it back here. And now we just have a bit darker red. Not quite the same color there. Let's try and add a bit more. Now you can just choose another red that you may have. I just have to add a bit more water because it's a bit dry. And here we go. Now we've got to be very slow, very careful. So I'm going to start at the bottom. Ooh, I like that red. 
Now I have a lot of water on my brush right now. So I'm just going to quickly add it to the center and put it around the center so that as my brush, brush starts to not have so much water on it, I can use my tip better to push the paint around. But if I do that right now, I might push it too quickly into the hearts. Okay, here goes. There's my tip. Now I'm just going to pull it in, pull it down, and try and get those edges in. Bring it right down to where the it's tied up. What a great color. And of course it'll dry a lot lighter. But right now it's a fun color. Okay, I'm still a little bit worried about how I'm using my brush. So I'm just going to be careful around here. I'm going to grab some more paint. And... This is probably a good place to start here. Trying not to go back and forth, trying to keep that bead of moisture going around. There we go. All right. Now, I'm going to be really careful and find my small brush here. Clean that off with a little bit of water. And before I move on to anything else, I am going to now just use it because I know, and it's just, there's nothing on it except water. So I can just make sure that I get all those edges there. Oh, <gasps> did you see that? I got my hand into the, my finger into there. Well, that will make that a happy accident. So don't worry. We can leave that there. If I try and lift it up right now with this red and it's drying fast, so I'll just leave it. Okay, I should have actually tilted this a bit. So let's try that. Now, I can come back here and add some more color. See how well I can get in without making a boo-boo. Now if I just kind of dabbed it and spent a little bit more time watching how I was dabbing, I should be able to do it without the little brush. So I just have to be patient and make sure I have enough color on my brush. That makes a big difference too. Because the more color I have, the faster it flows off the brush. Now, did you see when I had so much color here, it was a little bit too much because it was it was flowing too rapidly. Now I have a little bit more control because it's not quite as much water and more pigment. And it's not uh, leaving such a big bead. There we go. Okay, let's try and do that without the little brush. All right, excellent. Now we're gonna come back and get some more color and we'll do upper part of Tweety. Now this time you see there's more water on the brush and you can see I've got much more bead. So I've gotta be really careful. I'll bring it over here and try and get rid of some of that extra water that I've got on that brush. Come back here now and pull that along. Oh, careful, careful. See when it's when it is so wet too, it it likes to pick up the sizing on the paper, and then it's harder to make an even edge too. Let's pop that a little bit more there. Okay, so let's try and come over here. And now what I'm trying to do now, there's a couple things you could do. You could put a little piece of cloth or something over top of the other area so that you don't touch it with the part of your hand that maybe has some paint on it like mine does from down here. Or you can just try and keep your hand up with your pinky as you're going around to give you some more control. There we go. 
So you don't have to use such a large brush. You can go back to the other brush that I had here, this little one, and you can make it easier on yourself to go in there with a the little brush. It just takes more dabs of paint because you won't carry enough of bead. So it just you just be going back to your paint much more frequently. And you're taking smaller brush strokes. You could try and use the belly of your brush like we were doing with some of the other brush strokes we had. Um, I'm noticing that the color is a lot lighter because I'm picking up the last of the pigment that I have and it's just a different bit, bit of a different tone. But that's good because it's good variation to have a little bit of different colors. So let's pick up a little bit more water. I think what happened here now the color kind of separated, which is cool. Okay, so you see more of the pyrrolene or perline scarlet than you do the permanent rose or the added, ooh, added phthalo blue. It's all good. I just went straight back into my permanent rose to pop a bit more color back in and see what happens. So these are his feet or her feet or their feet. Okay, let me get a little bit more color and drop it back in there. I wouldn't recommend getting it wet because the water could just go around a little bit too much and make it a little hard to control. And since we're painting different colors in different places, it's probably better not to. All right, Tweety Bird's done. Well, uh, around Tweety Bird's done. Now we got to find a different color for our other balloons. So. These are great reds, and some nice little blooms are happening in there. But we need to make that darker. And there is a thing called a lizard crimson, or a quinacridone rose, that I just happen to have, and I'm just going to pop it right in here. That's pretty close. Maybe make it one level darker. Let's see. So you can change the color here. You could put in, you know, a, a, some wild color. I'm going to try and um, paint around that line, which is the rope that uh, the umbrella, the balloon is hanging from. So there's another wet on dry wash. There we go. So you can make it any color you want. I'm just keeping it with the theme of Valentine's and Friendship Day. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take that same color and I'm going to unify things by putting that over that heart and see if I can make that a little darker. So now I've I've taken a little bit of that paint and mixed in here and look at that's made it even redder. There we go. And now I'm going to take that and I'm actually going to use it here on these hearts. Maybe I'll make one heart on here and then I'll try different colors on the others. There's one. And why don't we put in one of the balloons, way this over this side here, make it that color. So now we've tied it in. That's great. Okay, and I'm just going to touch up my little lines here. Okay, and we can come back and add a little bit later. Now, um, this is kind of really fuchsia, 
So what we could do is take our permanent rose or whatever opera. Oh, there's opera rose. Oh, 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 oh. Opera rose is one of the colors that's in the Opus's container. And if I can find it, we'll use that. Because it's a bright, bright pink. It's even brighter than the permanent rose. Let's see if I can get it to pop up. I'd say it's like Barbie pink. So let's see how that pops up. Yeah, that's great. Okay, and just trying to pull that around and pick up some more color from my palette. We'll see how that dries. Let's put that color into one of the boots. And why don't we cover that? Heart. And in actual fact, we're supposed to take it and cover this whole circle here. Hmm. Why don't we leave that white and we'll paint the letters? Okay, and that we have way we've kept some white in the picture too. Well, I got to figure out what color we want for that. But why don't we go back and do Tweety? Now Tweety Bird is a really nice Hansa yellow look, and um, so I know I just have to find Hansa and make sure it's not too green. So let's clean that off a bit was using it with a bunch of green the other day, so I want to make sure it's clean. Alright, so here's my yellow. And now I'm going to do all of Tweety. We're not going to do the eyes. And I'm going to take it right over his beak and see what happens because I put some of the pink on there. See if it changes color at all. All the way down his body right over his shoe, his feet where the pink was too and see if that changes into a little bit of orange. If not, we're going to have to make an orange. And we're going to have to leave the eyes for a bit until the yellow dries so it doesn't accidentally creep into the eye when we paint the other colors. Because we'll be painting a blue and a black and then we're going to leave the bottom part white. And now we have to wait too for our Tweety to dry so that we can then make that orange. Is it's not it's not strong enough it, there's it's coming out a little bit of orange but not really a lot not enough so we'll get that all fixed since we've got the yellow let's make a yellow balloon and what else can we do with this balloon there's why don't we pop a little bit of yellow in here just to make it interesting give it a bit of tone here oh it's maybe a bit much. Okay, there we go. And that balances up with Tweety a little bit. Tweety Bird. Okay, so all we have to do is a few details and bring in a little bit of extra color into some of these areas. So I am just cleaning my brush really well. 
And I happen to have an orange. If you happen to have an orange, go for it. If not, you just need to make an orange with the yellow and the permanent rose to put the orange on the feet. Look at that. It's just dry enough that I can make a nice wash. Perfect. And now we just go into the mouth, all of it, just carefully. Let's hope it won't creep out into the other area. I don't think so. I think we're okay. And then we eventually will darken a little bit of the area of Tweety's mouth. Just actually on this side we'll darken it. I don't think the tongue, I'll, I'll find out the tongue has to be a little darker. Oh, let's make one of the balloons orange. And then we'll make the final balloon blue because we're going to use the blue on the eyes. But in the meantime, we need to get some a little bit of added shadows in here. And there's a couple ways of doing that. You can go back over just with the same color you have, just to get, so this is permanent rose. Where was permanent rose? This was a mix that was, holy mackerel, I can't remember. I know that's opera pink. I know that's a magenta, but I can't remember now if this was permanent. It looks very red. And I know we mixed a couple of different things. Oh yeah, this is the pyrene scarlet. And then we mixed the permanent rose with a few things here. So let's just pop in a little permanent rose over top. Now, be careful it's not too close to the feet because again, it's going to creep. And all I'm trying to do is add a little bit of shadow. If you look at the picture, there's some really nice dark areas. And I'm just popping that into the picture. So it doesn't have to be exact. It's just kind of a little bit here and there where the light is falling. And on the side especially. Maybe just darken that a bit in there between the legs. Sun was coming up here and I see that it's a little darker over here. And up on the top here, where those uh, little marks are, let's let's go right into the paint and just pop in some really dark color right there. Add a few lines. Oh, and is there? Yeah, there's a bit of color, but it's a little lighter on that side, and it's a little darker with a little bit of more permanent rose on that side. So, oh, well, upper upper rose. How about let's do a little bit in here and make a little different color there. And we missed a few little dots there, so let's go straight across there. That's looking good. Let's get a little dark in here. All right. Put that together a bit. Excellent. Uh, there was a, it was a little darker over here. I'm just going to pull, oh, 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 almost got into him. Now he's got a blushing cheek. Okay. How to fix that? I'm going to try and just take a bit of a tissue very carefully and dab it. But I don't know if it's going to work to just leave it like that. And I didn't do a very good job here, so I'll try and get a little bit of the what Ooh, another little touch. I should be using the smaller brush then. How about here? Oh, there we go again. Touched it again. Not watching how I'm using my brush. All right, so now with the scarlet one, I'm just going to go right back into my scarlet and I'm going to add a light, nice bit of scarlet right in here with a big swoop of my brush. And it was just on the edge here too, because it was a little bit over the other, more under the other balloon. 
Now, there's something that we had maybe talked about, I can't remember. And that is so that we don't get a really big line there, or in a couple of places, we just take a little bit of water, put the water on this side, and then we just push this into the water and it makes it nice and soft. It's not gonna be as much of a line. Gotta get some more water there, just on the edge. It'll make a bloom a little bit too, if you're not careful, so mix the paint around. Put it just around the edge there and then just push it together. I'm just pushing that together. Oh, and I see that I didn't quite touch that, so I'm just going to take a little bit more of the red, drop it in. Ooh, careful, careful, careful. And put it around there. Okay, that's looking good. Why don't I do that, the same thing with my brush, and just soften some of this area up so it looks a little more interesting. I think we're pretty good there. Oh yeah, and we said that we were going to try and darken this up right here. Let's see what happens if I just pop in a little color there. It could be a little darker, and I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to soften that up there. Okay, so we did the magenta here. This time I'm going to actually take the blue that I want to use, which I'm just going to use my phthalo blue. Just got to be careful how much I use. There's my phthalo blue. And if I pop a little bit of phthalo blue in there, it's going to get really purpley dark. Kind of cool. So I can even bring it over a bit and soften it up there. Oh, how about putting a little shadow in there? Wow. Maybe a little bit more. Woohoo. Now it's more of the blue, but it looks like a really dark blue. Let's put that there. Great. Now that line might actually make a little bit of a shadow right here too, so I can put that in a little bit too. Now that's just popped a little bit more of the um, umbrella. Why well, I want to say umbrella by the balloon just above here. And we could do the same here if we're careful because right now if we do it'll change it a little because it's it's a different red with a little bit more yellow in it and so it could change it to more of a brown kind of shadow. But it'll help just to pop the first balloon against the second balloon. Excellent. Let's just put a bit more in there. And what we will do, oh I said I was going to do the balloon here. See that? That's a little blue there. So I'm just going to add some water to it so it's a little softer. It's still got some red on the brush, and so it's not really as strong a blue, but it's just, just fine. So I'm going to go back into my phthalo, just mix it up a bit. I'm going to change brushes. I'm going to go into my little brush. So this is the area of the eye. We're going to do the whole upper part of the eye. So the area that I want blue is here, and then I want... Whoa! Be, oh no! It's creeping out! Where did that water come from? Nice eyelashes, but not what I want. Where did that water come from? <gasps> Went on the other side, too. Oh, dear. Okay. Let's get some water on here, and let's try and just lift it off. Ooh. So close. Okay, so I have to let that dry, and I have to make sure I don't put so much water on this brush. 
and more pigment and try and we'll do the second eye here do the center first okay that's working a little bit better I've got to wait for that one a little bit more now that's quite dark for the whole eye so if I clean my brush out and dab it a little bit I can push the paint away from there just so it goes into the upper part of the eye a little bit so it's darker at the top and a little lighter at the bottom let's try that again there we go okay and then if I mix well you've seen if I mix the pink and the blue together I get a purple but if I add if I add yellow onto that right now that'll change to green but if I mix all three together I'll get a dark black well a grayish black and I happen to have something very close to that right here but I'm just going to show you again by putting in some of the colors so if I take the blue add some blue and I take the red and I add some red see well we got a really really dark purple there now I clean my brush because if I don't clean my brush and I get into the yellow I'll actually use a different brush I've got all these brushes around here all I have to do is add a little yellow to my mix here we go and then it starts to go a different color now that's a bit more grayish so let's just see because I've already got dark blue on there I just tap that in there it may just go dark enough or I may have to do another layer because I don't want it to creep back again since I did such a good job of actually cleaning that up okay so let's try again we're gonna go with my color of brush here this time I'm not gonna do I'm gonna do try a different tactic here a little lighter phthalo blue and bring it up there okay and this time I'm just gonna take that dark and try and just dab it in there and see if we can avoid it making too many eyelashes and creeping back down too that's important so we may have to come back and I can take, lift a little bit of that and maybe bring that over here and we'll come back now we can do a little bit of blue on the this doesn't look wet just for the arrow it's just kind of fuzzy and then it just comes down and goes over there all right not too bad but a little hard eh all right going back to our opera rose my paint fell down so I'm just gonna grab it and we can see if we can just pop in a little bit more opera rose if we want to I don't know that we need to we want to let's see will it do anything if I pop oh be careful So I could even take it and just put it across like this just to make it interesting for the texture of the balloon. How about putting a little bit more color here? Give our other balloon a little bit more of a pop. How about what about our heart? See if we can darken that a bit. Maybe even our lettering would be nice to make it darker. These are all the little details and you can really change it to whatever you like. Now we never did find a color for that. I think we should go with a red. So I'm going back to my red, my perline red, scarlet, perline scarlet, and I'm popping that in there. Okay. So we're pretty close. We just need to get a little bit more dark into his beak and then into the eyes. And I could take a hair dryer to it, but I'm just going to leave it as it is for the moment. 
but we definitely need some color around the outside. So this is what I'm going to suggest we do. We're going to wet, not right against the umbrellas, we're going to wet around, maybe we didn't, better not wet here, we'll wet from here around, and then we're going to drop in a little phthalo blue, just to make a fun sky kind of background. So I'm looking for a round brush. There's a round brush. I'm looking for some clean water. Because this round brush feels like it needs to be cleaned a bit more. I don't know what was on the brush. Okay, so here we go. I'm making it wet. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know what that was that was on there but it's definitely leaving some residual color. So, just clean that a bit more. Okay, let's try again. I think we can do this now. So I'm just taking the water, not going too close to the umbrellas, uh, umbrellas, balloons. And just making it wet. Okay, so it went a little bit here too. So very carefully, I'm going to go back and find a place in my tray, which none of those are clean. So let's see, this is a clean area, so I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue. That's quite a lot actually. I'm going to add a bit more water to that. Okay, so that's better. Can you see that? There we go. And very carefully, I'm going to put it on the edge. I'm going to put it all around the edge. Just dab it around the edge. I'm going to dab it around up here. Dab, dab, dab. Dab, dab, dab. And I'm almost done my color. Look at how I have very little left. Okay. All right, that's great. Now you got a bit of blue everywhere there. And then I just want you to find some clean water, put it on your brush, and then basically I want you to just push that in a bit and let that kind of fall in there. Very carefully, don't let it get too close. And you can just get, you can get pretty close as long as you are comfortable. You can even put a little bit in between there if you want to without going back and getting any more pigment. All you're doing now is moving that whatever you've got left with the water on your brush very carefully. You don't have to get this close. Oh, I'm going to fix that. And I have lots of paint here on the corner, so I'm just going to pull it up just a bit. And I'm using the belly of my brush. Pushing that back in there, and then now just see if I can how close I can get without making a boo-boo. <gasps> Look at it already creeped in there. So let's try if I can use my brush side. Oof. There. Oh dear. It went a bit purple, so let's see if I can just lift that up. Oh. Now I've got to really be careful. Alright, so back over here. See if I can just just touch it a bit more. That's it. Don't want to do too much. Now I have this edge here, and I'm just gonna let my brush sop it up, and then take it and put it on the tissue and sop it up again. Oop, there's it left quite a residual here, so I'm gonna sop it up again. Make sure you just dry it on the brush, and then just go around and pick it up. You don't even have to press too hard. 
the bristles will pick the moisture up. Now I just happen to see that it kind of got pushed off here, so I'm just going to push it back because it's still wet enough. Same here. Okay. Now if you want to, 